Welcome back guys, it's Blue Green Snake here and today I'm going to be giving you guys the ultimate tutorial in making a sound font. In this video, I'm going to be using Audacity to find and extract the sample, Polyphone to create the sound font, and Ableton Live to put it into action. If you have similar software to what I'm going to use, you can use them. If not, you can download Audacity and Polyphone for free. If you don't have Ableton Live, you can use other software like FL Studio. Or you can download MuseScore for free. Chances are you're going to be using Audacity for this. To make life easier, I'd recommend downloading the free plugin that allows you to import videos and other audio formats into the software. This saves you the time of converting it yourself. Now it's time to find the samples you want to use. If you have the plugin, you can import entire movies into the software. However, if you're a music producer like me, I wouldn't recommend using samples from movies because of copyright and all that. Instead, maybe record your own samples, or ask permission from the owners of the samples. Lucky for me though, I have permission to use samples from my vocalist friend Mufaro, which I'm going to be using for the purpose of this video. Now, if your music making software can detune samples by sense, this step is kind of useless, but still a good mathematical skill to know. However, say you're using MuseScore, which can't detune samples like Live can, you can also detune them inside Audacity as well. Select a selection like this one and go to Effect and Change Pitch. Here it reads 342Hz or F4 which means the start of the selection is 342 hertz. For tuning purposes, we generally use A440 for tuning instruments in bands. Here are all the perfect A frequencies on the piano keyboard. Since the sample is reading an F, we need to find the perfect F4. To do that, we take the next perfect A below the said frequency. Next, we multiply 220 by 2 to the power of 8 twelfths, because F is 8 semitones out of 12, which is a full octave above A. In this case, our answer is 349 hertz. You can then put in that number into this box here, and use the high quality stretch. Keep in mind, this is entirely optional. Now, if you want to fully rely on the change pitch option in the effect tab, don't. It sometimes isn't very accurate. If you are pitch perfect like me and know what all the notes sound like, in this 15 second clip, you will see that I looped a single sound wave. Once again, if you are pitch perfect, you will know that you just heard an E. However, when I go to change its pitch, it says C3 instead of E5 like it should. This is clearly incorrect, but there is still a way to find the correct frequency. The most common way of finding any sound frequency or radio frequency is using the formula 1 divided by period. The period is the distance between any two matching points in a wave, otherwise known as a cycle. This applies to any type of function, no matter how complex it is, or how hard it may seem to make. Back to calculating the frequency, in the selected area, we can see, by zooming all the way in, that every line is 5 microseconds apart. When finding the period, never refer to the numbers in this window. They only go to the nearest millisecond. To find the period, write down the start and end point of the period.
Judging by the results here, it seems this voice sample is very accurate. And just for fun, I tried to recreate it using a harmonic waveform generator. Anyway, let's move on to the next step. The next step is looping the part of the sample you want to use. Select the part that you want to use, and a bit more. You can always trim it down in the sound font editing software. When you're done selecting, we can now export the clip you selected. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to call it example. And make sure you save it as a WAV file. In Polyphone, create a new sound font and give it a name. You can add the author and date if you want. Then, head over to the sample button and import the sample you just exported. Then in this window, set the root key for the sample. In this case, it is A3. If you have a MIDI keyboard plugged in like I do right here, you can play the sample you just imported. If you want to make a looped sample, follow these next few steps. If not, ignore this and move on to the next part. By using left and right click, you can set the start and end point of the loop. Right click and drag towards the bottom right of your screen to where one of the two points are. The green dotted line shows the shape of the wave that the red point is at, and vice versa. Click around until the dotted line fits nicely on top of the blue wave like you see here. This minimizes the clicking. If you imported a stereo sample, there should be two samples under the sample tab. We will need to copy the properties from the first one to the other. If you imported a mono sample, there will only be one and you can just move on to the next step. Simply copy and paste each value into its respective box. So, the loop start, loop end, root key, and any other effects you apply to the sample. Once you're done with that, select both samples with control click and click the new instrument button. Name the instrument whatever you'd like. To make the sound font loop, in both samples inside the loop playback row, double click each cell and select the second option that's given. While on this page, you can add other effects to your sound font as well. When you're done, select the instrument and click the quaver notes to create a new preset. The name you give the preset is the name that'll show up for your sound font when you import it into your software. You can also add more effects in this window if you want to. Now you can export the sound font as an SF2 and make sure all the presets inside the sound font are selected. Now that you've exported the sound font, you can now import it into your music making software. In my case, I'll drop it into Ableton Live, and it will create an Ableton Live device preset for that sound font.